Good morning, everyone, and Shabbat Shalom. We are thankful yet again for another opportunity to teach the word of Hashem. We are thankful yet again just to be here. Hashem is so good to us. He's so merciful to us. Uh, he brought us through another week, and now it is time to rest. It is time to relax and to focus on Him. So if you would, let us all stand. We're going to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4 this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 23. We go through verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23. Guard yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of Hashem, your Elohim, which he made with you, and shall make for yourselves a carved image in any likeness. Hashem, your Elohim, has commanded you. For Hashem, your Elohim, is a consuming fire, a jealous El. When you bring forth children and grandchildren, and shall grow old in the land, and shall do corruptly, and make a carved image in any likeness, and shall do what is evil in the eyes of Hashem, your Elohim, to provoke him, I shall call the Shamayim and earth to witness against you on that day that you soon completely perish from the land which you pass over the yard to possess. You do not prolong your days in it, but are completely destroyed. And Hashem shall scatter you among the peoples. You shall be left few in number among the nations where Hashem drives you. And there you shall serve mighty ones, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there, if you seek Hashem your Elohim and shall find when you search for him with all your heart and with all your being. Let us lift up our eyes. Shem, Adonai, Most High, Elyon, thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for how you have sanctified and set this day apart. Uh, thank you for how we recognize you as the one who sets us apart when we keep and preserve this day. May we be merciful as you are merciful to us. You lead God and direct us in our lives, uh, that we would just continue to put our focus into you, even as it is written in Psalms. Uh, direct our attention to you, that you would direct us in our lives, understanding that all things are in your hands, Hashem. Uh, this life, you orchestrate all of it, and you have revealed that to us uh, this week, that you are over all, you do all. Uh, may we just commit ourselves unto you and just be uh, in that in that time, that understanding that you are over all. There is no one beside you, no one like you, uh, no one is your equal. You are truly ill, and we thank you for how you have revealed yourself to us. You have delivered us uh, from uh, inherited doctrine. You have brought us into the truth. May we just be merciful to those who might not still understand who you are and that you are the only L. Uh, speak for us at this time. Give us an understanding, words that are clear, that we can apply them into our lives and walk away saying that you have truly met with us. You are our Elohim. We are your people. Baruch Hashem. Hallelujah. Amen. So, very thankful this morning uh, for the word, how he deals with us, how he works with us. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 23. Guard yourself. Lest you forget the covenant of Hashem, your Elohim, which he made with you and shall make for yourselves a carved image and any likeness Hashem, your Elohim, has commanded you. So guard yourself. That is take heed. Shemar. We talk about Shemar often. Protect yourself. Watch over yourself, lest to avoid the risk of forgetting. That is Shechab. The lack of memory or attention. So you put no more attention into it. You forget because you, your lack of memory, uh, even as it talks about in Psalms, we see it also in Joshua, you shall meditate on my Torah day and night. What is Torah? Instruction. These are my instructions. This is the way of life, the manner of life. So take heed to yourself. Who is responsible for you? You are. You're responsible for yourself. Therefore, you take heed and watch over yourself to avoid the risk of forgetting the covenant. You avoid the risk of forgetting the covenant. Guard yourself lest you forget, Shaka, the covenant of Hashem, your Elohim, which he made with you. What is the covenant? The bond. It is the bond. It is the covenant. Lest you forget the connection that you have made with Hashem. He wants that. He longs for that. A covenant, a connection, a bond with his people. Therefore, he says, watch over yourself. To avoid the risk through lack of attention, through lack of, of memory, forgetting the bond. Which he made with you and shall make for yourselves a carved image in any likeness Hashem your Elohim has commanded you. 
When you bring forth, or for Hashem, verse 24, your Elohim is a consuming fire, a jealous El. When you bring forth children and grandchildren and shall grow old in the land and shall do corruptly and make a carved image in any likeness and shall do what is evil in the eyes of Hashem, your Elohim, to provoke him. Now, we want to get into something and a thought this morning um, talking about the bond that we have with Hashem, the covenant, the connection that we have with him that we are continually reminding ourselves of him. We are continually focusing on him and building that bond, that connection, that covenant. Now, religion is a tool to divide, okay? Religion is a tool that is used to divide. They have taken the glory of the one, Hashem, God. They have taken the glory of Hashem and given it to others in religion, okay? There is only one. This is to answer a question that we probably all have, especially coming out of Christianity. Why did God answer our prayers when we prayed in that name? We also did a message called Misguided Prayer. If you've ever listened to that message, go back and listen to it. What is it? Through our ignorance, we prayed. Okay? And Hashem answered our prayer through our ignorance. But what we see in this is all prayer is answered by one. We have religion and we have people who pray in religion and I'm sure that they testify that their prayers are answered, right? Okay, you know why? Because there's only one. There's only one God, there is none else. As we continue on through this, we will see that and we will see, and I love it in Isaiah two, all the nations will flow. Every nation is going to flow to the mountain and they are going to hear, and there will be some, because that's what it says, there will be some who will ask and say, teach us, teach us Hashem, okay? So to answer the question, why are our prayers answered in there while we were there? Number one, it's through ignorance, but number two, all things come from one source. Every single one of them. So, is he a jealous ale? Yes, especially when you come to understand the truth, that you don't go after idols. Religion is a tool to divide. They have taken the glory of Hashem and given it to others, to idols. There is only one who answers all. That's it. So, verse 25, when you bring forth children and grandchildren and shall grow old in the land and shall do corruptly and make a carved image in any likeness and shall do what is troublesome, evil, in the eyes of Hashem, your Elohim, to provoke him. I shall call Shemayim and earth to witness against you on that day that you shall soon completely perish from the land which you pass over the yard to possess. You do not prolong your days in it, but you, com but you are completely destroyed. And Hashem shall scatter you among the peoples and shall be left few in number among the nations where Hashem drives you. And there you shall serve mighty ones, the works of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. So what has happened? Man has taken religion and has corrupted it, given the glory to men, not to God. There is one source of all things. And when we get into that, if we had a title for this message, the title of the message is In the Beginning. I want to go back to the source. I want to go back to the creator. I want to go back to the one who creates. He is the source. There is one source of life to all. Without the breath from the Shemayim, which we'll talk about that too. Without the breath, the spirit of Hashem, we are zero. We are nothing. The breath goes away and it talks about in Ecclesiastes, no one can stop that day. When it is time for your breath to be taken, no one will stop it. You can't. That's your time. You cannot live without God. Without Hashem. So they have taken the glory of the one creator and they have given it and spread it across religion. There is nothing more people fight about than doctrine. Right? Doctrine. And tell me this morning that we were no different. And as we continue on through this message, he says, and there, if you seek, you shall find. But there's a responsibility for everyone to seek. 
there's a responsibility for everyone to search in order to find. But how do you do that? You request. You desire. We're all guilty of serving other mighty ones. And we gave the glory that was prescribed to the one and only two other gods. Religion has separated. Religion has divided. And you even think about Christianity, just in general. There are so many different sects in Christianity, S-E-C-T-S, so many different sects in Christianity, and they all think, I've got it wrong, and they've got it, or I've got it right, they've got it wrong. We were that person. I'm right in Christianity, and they're wrong. We got the truth, and they got the lies. Do you see how it divides? So, there you shall serve mighty ones, the works of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. They have taken the glory of the one true, and they have spread it out of religion. Verse 29, but from there you shall seek Hashem, so that seek is bakash. You shall desire him. You demand him to be sought. But from there, when you get to a place and a state of searching for God, it also says in your distress, because that's usually when people start looking for God, right? In the, in the troubles and the trials and the hard times. You know, gratitude will drastically change your life. Being thankful for the things that you have. Being thankful for the people in your life. Not only when you say thank you to someone for the way that they influence you in your life, does that help them out and change their life? It also helps you. Being thankful will change your whole life. But too often, what do we do? We look for fault. How many times have we said that the past few weeks? We look for fault. We look for failure. We look for the fixture. We want to fix everything. But... We can't be thankful for what we already have. Gratitude will drastically change your life. Be thankful. So, but from there you shall seek. Search. That is everyone's responsibility. Remember, take heed to yourself. Search. But from there, if you seek Hashem, your Elohim, you shall find. That is matzah. It is secure. You will acquire him. You will meet him. True? True. <coughs> Yes, I think everybody in this building and anyone that could potentially be watching this at some point in time said, I want the truth. I want the truth, no matter what. You don't stop searching for it. You don't stop searching for answers. You don't. Where we came from is not where we are, even though we were so staunch on what we believed in. So headstrong. This is the truth. End of story. But you know who learns? You know who is the one who can be taught? First, the one who reverences Hashem. Number two, the one who is humble. You shall find him secure. Matzah, acquire meat. You will learn about him. You will be able to detect him. He will appear. He will exist. That is Hashem. When you want to find him, you will find him. If you search for him with all your heart and with all your being. So the heart is the lev or labab. It is the thought process. Your heart is your passion. So if you search for him with all of your passion and all of your being, that is nefesh. So that's activity of mind, activity of will, and activity of character. If you search for him, you will find him. I want to get back to the source. That is yod heh vav -Hey, the source. He is the source of all life. Without him, there would be nothing. You read Ecclesiastes 1. He orchestrates all. I found that out this week. Everything is of him. Every single thing is of him. And even as it talks about in Isaiah, I create the evil, I create the prosperity, the good. I do it all. Every bit of it. It's me. In the beginning, he created darkness. It was there. And when we get into that, y'all better brought your shovels this morning because there was something in uh, Genesis 1 that blew my mind when we read it because we're going to dig. 
So you, it's your responsibility. I can't change anyone. And it's not my responsibility to change anyone. That's not my, that's not my job. I've learned to let go. I've learned, it, does that uh, take away the responsibility of teaching? No, it does not. But it does take away the pride of teaching. It does take away the arrogance of teaching. It makes us a little more humble when we teach to understand that it's Hashem that's going to have to reveal it because who revealed it to you? God. We get so bent out of shape over people. And we were no different. But he came to us and he showed us what was real. But you have to have a desire. You have to have a demand. It has to be sought by you. You shall find it when you search for him with all your heart and with all your being. So he is the source. He is the source of all life. He is your all. He is your everything. Without him, we are nothing but a bag of bones. But even so, he created that from the dust. You were created with purpose. So you want answers? He will instruct you. You want peace? He is your all. You want love and life? Ecclesiastes 3. Everything is beautiful in its time, and he has created the one over the other. Why? So man cannot find out what is after him. But every single thing in order is beautiful when you receive it as Hashem has granted it. So he says, what's the sum of it all? You fear Hashem, you keep his commands, it's the duty of all men. Every, uh, every act shall be judged by Hashem. But he said, enjoy your life. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. Eat, drink. This is the gift of God. But we have lost out on the focus of enjoying life and what he has given us. And you know what the answer to complaint is? We've said it many times. Gratitude. Gratitude. Hashem, when he had them in the wilderness, what were they complaining about? We don't have the leeks and we don't have the meat and we don't have this. But he said, your shoe didn't wear out and your clothes didn't wear out on you, why didn't you appreciate that? Gratitude. Did he not take care of them through the whole thing? Gratitude. So he is the source of all creation. He is requesting that covenant. He is requesting that bond to be built and not be broken. Genesis 1. I love it. About to dig. Okay. So title of the message in the beginning. So in the beginning, Elohim created the Shemaim and the earth. Now we'll hit on this again, but we'll just mention it right now. We are of both. That's what that means. Okay. In the beginning, he created man of both. We were made out of dust. And then what, what did he do? He breathed into man the breath of life and he became a living being, nefesh, activity of mind, will, and character. So we are of both. We are of heaven and we are of earth, Shamayim. But the word that we wanted to get into is created. In the beginning, God created, bara. It is he created, he shaped it, he fashioned it, he made it. There's nothing that was made without God. He is the creator. I want to get back to that unity with the one who creates. And the earth came to be formless, the earth was without form. That is Tahu. It is formless. There was confusion. There was emptiness. It was almost unreal. It was a wasteland, a place of chaos, a wilderness. And empty. That is void. Bohu. It is void, waste. It was an undistinguishable ruin when he created it. And darkness was on the face of the deep. The darkness is kosek. It is obscurity. There was misery, death, destruction, ignorance. Sorrow was in the beginning. And the Ruach of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters. So what is waters? 
Waters is wisdom. Waters is knowledge. But notice, it moved over the face of the deep. What does it say in Proverbs? Knowledge, wisdom is like a deep well, but a man of understanding will do what? Draw it out. So this is the deep. This is the water. But in the beginning, it was void. It had no form. It was dark. There was ignorance. It was undistinguishable ruin. It was a wasteland, formless. There was confusion. It was a place of chaos. And the spirit moved over the deep. What's the spirit? It's the Ruach. It's his breath. It moved over the deep. And Elohim said, let light come to be, and the light came to be. He said, that is Amar, to say, to speak, utter, to answer, to think, command, to be told. I love the creative word. And that's what we're talking about when we get into Genesis 1 here. It is his word that creates. I don't know if you've ever seen the video where they do the frequency and the sound, and there is sand on top of the box. And as the frequency and sound goes up, what happens to the sand? It creates new forms. I believe literally the booming of his voice created, and it was there. That same booming voice brought through the Ruach, brought through his spirit, through his breath, through the word, Ezekiel 37, it's the same thing that's creating you. He said, let light come into be, and light came in to be. The light is, or light of life, light of prosperity, light of instruction, light of face illumination. Here we go. <laughs> in the beginning, God made the earth in confusion, empty and ignorant. He wasn't that way, but that's the way he created all things. He made the earth that way. You ready? <laughs> Hashem answered the ignorance. He said, let there be light. Hashem answered the darkness, the obscurity. He answered the ignorance and there was instruction of life, prosperity, and happiness. That's what light is. The light of life. There it was, or light of life, light of prosperity, light of instruction, light of face. He delighted in his creation. It is the word of Hashem that creates. It is carried by his ruach, the breath, the mind, the spirit, the wind, the disposition, the life. He created both the Shemaim and the earth in man. So, if you have questions, if you want peace, if you want love, if you want life in abundance, what do you do? Where do you go? You go back to the source, the one who created all. I love it. He answered the darkness. <laughs> A lot of times we don't have answers. A lot of times we have questions. The questions we asked brought us to where we are now. And it said he answered it with what? Instruction. Are you going back to the source? I want that bond. I want that connection, that covenant with the creator. Do you feel his presence in your life? Do you feel when he is there with you? Can you experience God? Ezekiel 37. Gets better. We all know Ezekiel 37 about the dry bones, but all this connects together. So Ezekiel 37 verse 1, and the hand of Hashem was upon me and took me out of the out by the ruach of Hashem. So it is the spirit that brings the word, okay? It is the breath when you speak what happens? You're breathing. It is the spirit that's the vessel of the word. Okay. He took me out by the Ruach of Hashem, that is his spirit, and put me down in the midst of the valley, and it was filled with dry bones. And he made me pass among them all around to see there were very many on the surface of the valley, and see they were very dry. That is Yabesh. They lacked moisture. What did we say in Genesis 1? 
The Ruach went over the face of the deep. It was over the waters. They lacked instruction. They lacked hope. Yabesh, not only was it lacking moisture, there was confusion and shame. You even have so many different uh, sects in Judaism. And Judaism holds up Moses. Who's the one that sent Moses? The one. There is but one. There can only be one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Akkad. When you are in love, there is only one. Not many. One. They're dry. They lacked moisture. See, they were very dry. There was a lot of confusion and shame. And he said to me, son of man, would these bones live? And I said, oh, master, you know. Again, he said to me, Naba, to these, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word. So what's the vessel of the word? The spirit, his breath. It is what is creating. It is what is making you alive. I think about the connection that Adam had with Hashem. And I've been really meditating and thinking on this. So the very first writings were cuneiform, okay? Well, what happened before the very first writings? Where was the connection of God then? You know. I want to get back to the source. And you shall say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of Hashem. Thus said the master to these bones, see, I am bringing you into, uh, bringing into you a spirit and you shall live. Spirit, activity of mind, will, and character. It's driven, the spirit is the vessel for the word. And I shall put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put a spirit in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am Hashem. So I am the one who is proclaiming this to be and it is going to happen, okay? So it is the spirit that brings life. I see in this the same thing that was happening in the beginning when he created Adam. And then you see everything come together after the breath was breathed into them. Instruction. Instruction on life. Instruction on how to live. The people were confused and ashamed. There was no one to lead them. They shall live. And I shall put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put a spirit in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am Hashem. So it is the spirit of the vessel that brings the word that brings life. And brings us back to life. It takes away the what? Confusion and shame. It brings moisture. And Nabu, and I Nabu, I prophesied and I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and there was a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. And I looked and saw sinews and flesh came upon them and skin covered them and there was no spirit in them. And then he said to me, Naba to the spirit, Naba son of man. So prophesy to the spirit. It's got to bring the word. And you shall say to the spirit, thus said the master of Shem, come from the four winds of uh, o spirit, and breathe on these slain so that they may live. And I prophesied as he commanded me, and the spirit came into them, brought the word, and they lived and stood up on their feet, a very great army. And he said to me, son of man, these bones are all the house of Israel. See, uh, they say our bones are dry, we lack moisture, and our expectancy has perished, and we ourselves have been cut off. The hope was gone. They gave up. Our hope is gone. Bring back to us the word that brings us to life. Go back to the source, the one who creates all. Verse 12, therefore, Naba, and you shall say to them, thus said the master of Shem, see, O my people, I am opening your graves and shall bring you up from your graves and shall bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am a Shem when I open your graves, O my people, and bring you up from your graves. And I shall put my Ruach in you, my spirit of life, prosperity. And what was the other one? 
light of life, light of prosperity, light of instruction, light of face, illumination. And you shall live and I shall settle you in your own land and you shall know that I, Hashem, have spoken and I have done it, declares Hashem. We were all dried up. We don't know how to live. Creation needs a strong connection with the creator. Going back to the source in order to live. The bond. That's what that covenant is. It is a bond. It is a connection. Does he speak with you? Does he guide you in your life? Does he comfort you? The real question is, do you go to him? A lot of times we have confusion and shame. So we don't go. We don't ask. We don't request. We don't seek. Religion is a tool to separate the people for us to fight wars among ourselves over doctrine and be proud and boastful, boastful of what we know. The true teacher is humble. Humble. Humble enough to learn. But what happens with pride? Pride, with pride comes destruction. But with humbleness comes instruction. We can be taught and we can learn. If we were so proud over what we knew, we never would have got to the position where we are now. Are we continuing to ask? He said, seek and you shall find when you truly desire it and you truly want to know. Proverbs 21. But it's all of our responsibility. It's the people that you talk to that you want them to understand the truth. It's their responsibility. Uh, the four rules of engagement. Number one, everybody is right. Great is the desire to be right. You cannot change anyone's mind. All you can do is help them to shift their perspective based on what they already know. If you can take scripture and so show somebody what scripture actually says, then they are now responsible. And that's why, like Ezekiel, he says, teach them. And when you teach them, it's their responsibility now. But if you do not teach them, it's on you. But we have taken that as pride and proud. And we have used that to spread false doctrine before. Because that's used by many religions. So he said, teach them. Proverbs 21, or, yeah, Proverbs 21, verse 1. I want you to see something. Uh, the sovereign's heart is as channels of water in the hand of Hashem. He does it all. <laughs> His heart is like channels of water. What happens? When something erodes, it makes a new channel. Water is very powerful. It can make new ways. And Hashem does the same. He turns it wherever he wants. All a man's ways are right in his own eyes, but Hashem weighs the heart. I'm sick <laughs> of the proud teacher. So the, um, the thing that we were talking about, I believe in boldness and I believe in courage, but you can be humble with that too. Um, the thing that they're debating over now is daylight. When does the day start? Okay, that's the debate now. But you know what the thing is? People just wanna debate. People don't want the truth. When we get into uh, answer a fool according to his knowledge or answer a fool according to his words and don't answer him. We'll get into that too. Why do we want to argue? Why do we want to get bent out of shape? It doesn't help anybody. He says, don't answer a fool lest you become like him. Lest you become foolish. There are people out there. You know what I love? A conversation with someone who is willing to listen. You might not agree but both of you are coming from a position that you are sharing your perspective of what you see. Neither of you are proud. You both just want to know. You both just want to learn. <clears throat> I have been the proud person. I have been the one that knew it all. And like I said before, there were things that we stood on that are heresy. 
thought we would never change. He has really, and you, even as he inspires me now, he says, take away the stony heart and give yourself a heart of flesh. Why are we so angry? Why are we so proud? Why are we so stubborn? We're not gonna get anywhere with God that way. So how many things did we have to revise, reconsider and change? How much are we still pondering, seeking and have a desire to find? There's still things that we don't know. There are still things that I want to find out. How many Christian doctrines have we thrown in the trash? All of it. <laughs> all of it. That we used to stand for. We are all, every single one of us, we are all functioning in our current understanding with our present knowledge. Every single one of us. That is every person in the world. We have all been raised different. We have all had different understanding, every single one of us. Does that mean stay where you are? No. We are all functioning in our current understanding with our present knowledge, but we must seek in order to find. If you want it, you have to work for it. If you want it, you got to put in the effort. But you can only want it for yourself. You can't want it for anyone else. So don't get bent out of shape when people don't understand. You know, it's more valuable to the person, it's more valuable to us when we study and learn for ourselves versus someone pressuring us with it or someone pushing it on us. And I tell you that you can get someone uh, through, through force to believe the way that you believe, but it will not have long lasting effects until they want it for themselves. That's when it truly sets in when they want it, just like it is with you. When you want it, you want to seek it, you will find it. But when we seek, we will find. If you want it, you have to work for it. You have to put in the effort. How many things have we said, this is truth, I'm sticking to it, and it was wrong? Do you know what I'm longing for? I'm longing for the day we go up to the mountain. That's what I'm longing for. The day when there is no more confusion, there is no more shame. There is no more reproach. We're going up to the mountain. We desire the Torah of Hashem and he teaches us what is right. That doesn't mean give up and you don't search because we're all learning. Hashem blesses the humble in spirit. I want to get back to the source, the oneness, creation. Proverbs 26, there's so much arrogancy out there, so much pride, proud, and that is what divides us. Proverbs 26, four and five, do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also become like him. So to avoid becoming foolish, don't answer. To avoid becoming foolish, that is anybody who wants to quarrel, fight, and I know if you have ever discussed scripture with anyone over a period of time, you can tell when people don't want to listen. You can tell when people are not open. You can tell when people just want to argue, and you can tell when people are proud or humble. You can tell. And if you <laughs> prove somebody wrong, just based on scripture, if you prove somebody wrong, they get defensive. Um, it talked about, I was listening to something, I don't remember the third one, but I do remember the first two when it talks about uh, the reasons for divorce. The first one, uh, it starts out this way and it ends with contentment, but the first one is criticism. If you are highly critical of your other person and you're only attacking them and you uh, criticize everything that they do, that's bad, that's bad, that's the jab. It's criticism into defensiveness which is what we're talking about here. If you're overly critical of someone that you're talking with, what do they do? They get defensive. They want to defend it. They're not open to what you have to say, which goes back to, I hear you, that book that we were listening to. I hear you. Sometimes people just want to be validated. 
You don't have to agree with someone in order to validate them. But if you validate first the way that they feel, they are more willing to listen to what you have to say. But too often, what do we do? We shut them down with the answer and we don't want to listen to them. No wonder no one wants to listen to us because we don't have validation. Like I said, you can validate the way someone feels about something and they could be wrong. Same thing with you. But you validate first and then you answer. That's the same way with a couple. A lot of times, and number one, women are very emotional. Yes, women are emotional creatures. Men are logical creatures. Okay, so that's why sometimes we argue. The woman just wants you to know how she feels. So identify how she feels. You can say something like, I see that you're sad. I see you're unhappy. I see that you're angry. You are now validating the way she feels in order to give her an answer. But what do men want to do? Think of everything logically, without emotion, and let's just figure out the solution. She does not need that. A woman wants to be more emotionally involved with you than she does the logical portion. If you can get emotionally involved with your partner first, then you both can find common ground and it's easier to lead. She just wants you to know how she feels. And then you can instruct. I see that you're angry. I see that you're sad. Validate the feeling first. Give the answer. Reevaluate. What did you think about that? How did that make you feel? And then you might have to give more advice. But don't just give the advice first. Because the person is not being heard. The person is not being validated. And then what happens? Like we said, they get defensive. And you cannot talk to them. You will not get anything over. They are not ready to listen. Gotta realize where you came from and it has to do with empathy. You know where you came from more than anybody else knows where you came from. So just realize we're all trying to learn. Every single one of us. So, what does he say? Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also become like him. Foolish, arrogant, proud. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he become wise in his own eyes. To answer is to bring light to ignorance. That's what he's talking about. Don't answer him if you're going to end up being like he is. But answer him in order to bring light to ignorance and light to pride, lest he think that he be right. Isaiah 2, and we'll close out. Some people, you got to really choose your battles because some people are just not worth fighting with because they are not willing to listen. Isaiah 2, this is the day that I am looking for. Verse 1, the word of Yeshiahu, the son of Amat, saw concerning Yehuda and Yerushalayim. And it shall be in the latter days that the mountain... Uh, that the mountain of the house of Hashem is established on the top of the mountain. So what is that saying? There are kingdoms, and one day there will be one kingdom. And that's the same thing of Nebuchadnezzar. There is one. And that rock came down, and it was established. There will be one kingdom. The mountains and the hills are kingdoms, is what that is. So there will be one. The mountain of the house of Hashem is established on the top of the mountain, so it will rule over all. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Every single person is going to see the source, the one. Like we said, misguided prayer. Hashem is the source of all life. Verse 3, and many people shall come up and say, notice it doesn't say all, because you also have to connect that to Isaiah 45. There will be some that will be disgusted when they see Hashem and they have to bow before him and confess that he is God and there's no one else, no one like him, no one to compare. The people shall come up and say, 
Come and let us go up to the mountain of Hashem, to the house of Elohim of Yaakov, and let us uh, let him teach us his ways, and let us walk in his paths. For out of Zion comes forth Torah and the word of Hashem from Yerushalayim. And he shall judge between the nations and shall reprove many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall teach battle anymore. There will be peace on earth and we will want to learn the truth and we will hear it from the source. There will be no more confusion and shame. He will bring us what? The light. O house of Yaakov, come and let us walk in the light of Hashem. Light, the light of life or the light of prosperity, the light of instruction, the light of faith. He is your all. He is your everything. You want answers? Instruction is there. You want peace? Let him comfort you. You want love and life? He is over all. Go back to the source. Go back to the one who creates. It is his word that brings life. The proud and the stubborn will never learn. Every nation is going to come and there's going to be peace. They will flow to the source for instruction from the Most High. What a day. That is what I'm looking for. There is no more religion. There are no more idols. There is no one taking the glory from Hashem. We are all learning his what? Torah. What is Torah? His instruction. He is teaching us the way of life. That is what I'm looking for. Until that day, I will continue to search. And until that day, I will search to find what the answers are in order to teach and give people direction. Because what is Torah also? Direction. In the beginning. Go back to the beginning. That's what I'm looking for, that connection and that bond, that covenant with my creator. Everybody have a blessed day. Shabbat Shalom.